Alrighty, howdy neighbors, and welcome to Heart Fragment. Um, I don't know too much about this game except for the fact that it is a dating sim. We have to try to find the Heart Fragments. <laughs> Let's go. It contains potentially triggering or ice draining screen effects. Would you like to turn these off? I would not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep them on. So viewer discretion advised. Receive notifications when an effect in level or personality factor is changed. Yes. Few tutorials when new gameplay mechanics have been introduced. Yes, we're gonna have all of these as yeses. Let's go, baby. Somewhere in this world, a world filled with tragedy, filled with pain, filled with people whose hearts have fragmented over time as they experience misfortune. Somewhere in this world, a happy ending must await, right? If such an ending doesn't await us at some point along the road, what was the point of traveling it in the first place? But maybe is a happy ending really just an end point in your life? Maybe it's an ongoing journey. Maybe people shouldn't see one ultimate happy ending, but multiple happy endings along the way. <laughs> or maybe that's stupid. I don't really know. But I believe tragedy can't be the only option. I want to believe that, at least. Good luck finding it. That happy ending we all hope for. Thank you. Welcome to Heart Fragment. Thank you. Ah, 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 ah. Man. Please be aware. Wild horror based themes are present in this game. If you are sensitive to sudden noises, <laughs> unnerving images, or content that deals with serious subject matters. Please proceed with caution. Well, I know me, and I know I... This game is intended for players ages 12 plus. Oh, 22. And even still, I might have an issue. So let's be ready. You and I, let's do this together. Before we get started, Cell A or cell ooh. Small portion of this appearances, CGs, the process, and will typically really be shown in default style. Okay. Is Didn't there something you want to say? Is there something you want to say? Is there something you want to say? Yeah, it's me. Hell yeah. Is there something you want to say? And then, of course, we're gonna go with Iris. Okay! Learn how to fucking spell. Thank you. Is yeah, there something me. you want to say? Is there something you want to say? Is there something you want to say? Yeah, it's That's me. Close enough. All right, let's go. Let us begin, Iris. Act Zero. Truth and Lies. Lana! Lana! Read me a story! <laughs> alright, alright. What story did you want to hear this time? Little Red Riding Hood! That one again? Are you sure? I guess I'm just gonna be vibing. <laughs> Here we go. You sure do love Little Red, don't you? Is she your favorite? You know what? Here's what we're gonna do. Hold on. Where's the the? Uh... That's what I want. Yeah, we'll turn this all the way up. And we'll save just in case. Why not? Yeah! Doesn't the wolf scare you? 
Nuh-uh. I'm scarier than him. Rawr! And such an imagination. <laughs> you got me, you got me. You're a brave little kiddo, aren't you? Come up onto my lap. I'll read the book for you. Yay! Thank you, Lana! Lana? When is mom coming home? Never. Oh! It is about time for her to get back, isn't it? Don't worry. I'm sure she'll be home soon. <laughs> I just... I was joking. I was joking. It was supposed to be a joke. I'm so sorry. <clears throat> Mom, no! <sighs> Again. I love the haircut, though. Yum yum. Another dream. It's always the same. You didn't witness the death firsthand. But the images that flash through your mind at night are so vivid. As though you had been there. It seemed like it didn't matter how many times the dream occurred. You'd always wake up in a cold sweat, frightened and shaking. Looks like I kicked off all my covers in my sleep again, too. Clearly, you are still wearing some. You can never fall asleep without them. It's as... It's as though they're your protection. And without them wrapped around your body, you feel defenseless. But you always woke up only half covered, with no blankets on the bed at all. How long has it been now? Ten years, huh? Ten years since her death. If only you could just forget it already. But the nightmares won't let you. They force you to continue grieving. Your eyes wander over to the phone next to your pillow. Gotta hurry. Time to get up and start another day. Hello. You're getting lazy, kid. Thanks, Gray. You would think after all these years, you'd at least be used to your father's presence. But you still can't stand him. So this is the last thing I want to say after waking up from a nightmare. Sometimes you wonder why he even bothered to take you in after your mom's death. He's the one that left in the first place. And the most likely theory you've decided is guilt. He'd feel guilty if he left his child alone and adopted you to feel like he's accomplished something. It's almost funny. All he's accomplished is a strained relationship. Let's... Let's be polite. Morning. Sorry I'm late. Yes, uh, well, good. Yes, uh, you have a good day. <laughs> it was worth it to be polite, even if the only good thing that came out of it was that flustered reaction. It looks like an idiot. Did you want breakfast? Um, shit. Now I'm the one caught off guard. No, I'm fine. You feel as I was following your movements while you get ready for school. It isn't a piercing gaze by any means. I feel like he's trying to figure out what to say to you. I wish he'd just speak up instead of staring at me like that. Sitting there like a statue just makes him look even more like a fool. But he truly is just a damn fool, isn't he? Bye. Turn away from your shocked looking father. At least the flustered reaction you got out of him by ignoring his initial accusation of laziness and the awkward way of goodbye that he offers as you leave were an amusing start to the day. Even though he slept in, you're not exactly in a rush to get to his class. I have a few more months until I graduate, but it still feels like too much time. Yo, I felt the opposite. I was so scared to graduate, for real, for real. The only real good thing about your final year of high school has been your history teacher. You hoped to end up in a class and were thrilled when you did. 
it was a way of making boring topics seem interesting, and it goes out of her way to make bonus assignments for a boost to your grade. The topic the <laughs> Let's figure out if I can read. This was no. The topics usually Oh my god. The topics are usually unrelated to the important events in history. And instead let's soon explore more niche interests. That says sandwood. I first read sandwich. That that's how good I'm doing tonight. Fuck. When you're out of school, you begin to search for your best friend. Ah, she's talking to that guy again. They used to be spending a lot of time together recently. She looks sort of busy. Your inner psyche is made up of various traits that will affect your dialogue and endings as you progress the story. The combination of your ego, curiosity, trust, and creativity will help form who you are. Selflessness was boosted. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I guess I probably shouldn't get in the way. Looks like she's having a good time. I'm judging by the atmosphere going on between her and the guy. She's probably about to make a move. School passes by. Same and boring as ever. The only highlights are homework for math and science. And a new art assignment to draw a sketch of someone close to you and turn it in next Tuesday. Finally, the last class of the day arrives. History. Today is the new bonus assignment, right? I hope it'll be an interesting topic. While well, bonus assignments were always optional, almost everyone does a few of them to get that boost to their grain. Hi hi! Hi Shannon. Oh, Shannon, hey. I saw you walking into school alone earlier. You know you're allowed to talk to me, right? I don't bite. Of course, I just didn't want to interrupt. I'm never too busy for you, silly. Haha, ah, thanks. You look like you're in a good mood. You betcha I am. I'm... Miss LeFay. I think you already know what I'm about to say. Hehe, <laughs> sorry. Shannon rushes back to her desk. There seems to be an unspoken rule that says you and Shannon cannot be seated next to each other. You can thank Shannon for that, after pissing off every teacher and student in the whole school with her shattering. But while Shannon's desk is across the room from yours, it doesn't stop her from glancing over at you every once in a while and grinning every time she manages to make eye contact. Alright, everyone. Time for the new bonus assignment. This is a fun one, and a rather interesting one, too. This week's theme is family history. Oh, Shannon. Me too, dude. That's right. Your assignment is to write about your own family's past. Same minimum length as always. I encourage you to look as far back into your history as you can get. Oh. As you can, to get the most out of the assignment. You feel all the previous eagerness you had drained from your body at once. That's a difficult one. Your family consists of two people. Your father, who you hate, and your mother, who died. You next say nothing about your family's past. You never met your grandparents. In fact, you hadn't even met your father until you met this funeral. Iris. Uh, Shannon. Sorry, I guess I kind of zoned out. I figured that might be the case. She gazes down at you with concern and puts her hand on your shoulder. Are you going to be alright? Jeez, what was that dummy thinking given to someone like that? Want me to talk to her about it? I'm fine. I don't need to be coddled. Besides, it's optional anyway. Even so. It must have made you sad to think about that, right? I don't want anything to make you feel... I'm fine. Let's just leave it at that, alright? Please. If you say so. Shannon has good intentions, but the truth is that talking about this sort of thing out loud tends to make you feel worse. 
The two of you are a long past battling this type of thing out. There was a time when Shannon would insist bottling it up was no good and keep on pushing regardless of your protests. But anyway, don't forget, my house tomorrow at noon. I won't forget. See you then, Shannon. I have something really good to tell you. Ooh, ooh, and... Shannon pauses to rustle around in her bag. Check this out. Coupons? You betcha. The new smoothie bar opening up on Sunday. But that's not the biggest thing. Look at this one. Oh, strawberry lemonade. Your favorite, right? We gotta get some time. Oh, we gotta go sometime. Tomorrow's Saturday, though. Should we hang on a Sunday instead? Hehe. <laughs> Sunday won't work. I'll tell you all about it tomorrow. Are you going home right away? I was planning to. Why? No reason. Just thought if you had places to go, I'd tag along. Wouldn't want you to get lonely, right, Iris? Thanks. I'm not going to be lonely between now and tomorrow at noon, though. Don't worry about me so much. Yeah, I should have expected that. See you tomorrow. Bye. What about the feeling she wasn't just worried about my loneliness back there? You know Shannon well enough to understand the type of person she is. The sort that thrives in social interaction. A typical extrovert. In comparison, it wasn't that you never spoke to other people at all. You try sometimes, but mostly when prompted by Shannon. People are, were always polite, but you never got the impression that they actually wanted to be around you. With more politeness out of obligation. Would you have even befriended Shannon if it was if she wasn't so pushy? Probably not. TV blaring loudly as always. Why did we get a title card? <laughs> Why did we get the title card? TV blurring. Oh, here he said that. Oopsie. And then. That you, kid? The volume from the living room turns down a bit after the front door slamming shut alerts him to your presence. Yeah, it's me. Come to the living room, right? Do you have to smoke in the house? Well, if his cigarette lingers in the air. He makes a motion with his arm for you to come and sit near him. Not happening. Stupid old man. You're not disappointed. I know you didn't want me near you anyway. I noticed you were making an effort this morning. I know that I need to start making more of an effort too. Things have been difficult between us, and a lot of this is on me. But... That aside though, tell me about your day. How was school? It was fine. Any new projects? Anything interesting? Yeah. I'm not going to be able to escape to my room and tell this over with, am I? I as well get it over with. Art and history. I need to draw someone close to me and write about my family history. I'm sure art assignment will turn out just fine, but... Hey now, family history, huh? You ever been curious about that sort of thing? His eyes actually seem to light up with genuine interest when you bring that topic up, but once later he shifts his expression as if trying to hide the interest. Not really. I'm sure it's all boring anyway. Ha! Far from boring. Alright, go ahead. Tell me just how interesting we are. Um... Can't do that. Come on, just cut to the chase already. If you have something to tell me, tell me. You're a good kid. Whether you do wish it, with all my heart. Of course you're gonna do it Of course you're going to go silent now. Typical. You have to make something up for your assignment. Seriously, you are so clearly you clear your mind of any accusations you will like to make, and you speak as calmly as you can manage. It's not easy. Talking to him is never easy. Tell me, please. He 
really feeling that curious. Are you trying to make me beg? Come on already. Alright, enough of that face. I want you pouting at me. I had planned on keeping this from you for longer, but you're old enough now, I think. You're an adult after all. Promise me first, though. You gotta keep it a secret. Uh, sure. Whatever. You agreed, even if it's only to make him get on with it. I'm gonna tell you a bit of a story here, then. It's an interesting one. You might even find it a bit intriguing. It makes it sound like he's about to tell me a fairy tale. A fairy tale, huh? Yeah, that was about how it sounds. A long time ago, there was a lab. No one really knows what went on inside that lab. But I do know that when people came out, they weren't the same. Not in appearance. They look the same. But on the inside, that's where they changed. I'm gonna open up a can of Gamer Juice. Which is Pepsi, by the way. Take a sip and we will continue. Fuck yeah. The lab was experimenting with a chemical in hopes of enhancing human ability. Guess you could call it an attempt to help humans evolve faster. Super speed, super strength, increased mental capacity, telekinesis. Carry. It would bring out a power beyond someone's wildest dreams. The lead scientist was desperate for his life's work to be recognized, for his experiment to be a success. And in some ways it was. Those who took part in the experiment's first human trials became unlike anything the world had seen before. But no success story is without its downfalls, and an unexpected side effect occurred. They began to lose their humanity. It only happened in short bursts at first, but when it did, together with their newfound powers, they became violently dangerous. And so they were euthanized, killed off. Their lives ended as humanely as possible, and the experiment marked a failure. The risk was too great to continue any further. But one man, the lead scientist of the project, didn't want to just quit. Still desperate for his project to be a success, for his life's work to not go unnoticed, he created one last attempt at the drug, hoping to remove the side effects. Then he injected the drug into himself. It was too late though. The drug was considered dangerous already, and the scientist, despite showing none of the horrific side effects, went into hiding with his wife after realizing that he'd never convince anyone he wouldn't turn violent as well. The man was never found, and with complete silence from him, perhaps proving that he had kept his sanity, eventually the search was called off. The failed experiment was called to a close, and buried. Well... <laughs> okay, what's with the dramatic story all of a sudden? You can't be serious. Put your belief aside for a moment. You were your old man. What did you think? I guess it was kind of interesting. I have to admit, I have no idea you were such a conspiracy theorist. Ah, eh, no conspiracy going on. It's an old man telling an old story. You're being even more insufferable than usual. One moment you're talking about family history assignment, and then, you know what? You're narrating a scary story to me. You lost the chance to tuck me into bed with a fairy tale a long time ago, Dad. 
You know that. That's... Before you had a chance to retort in frustration, you heard a ringing phone. A ringing noise. And your father takes his phone out of his pocket. Ah, crap. I gotta take this. Seriously, at a time like this, I gotta do that. Blabber on incoherently about cryptic crap, and then rush off as if he's a victim in an interrogation room. If he's going to try to make me pry for it, I won't give in to whatever game he's playing. You drive me insane. His words were mumbled in a soft, barely audible tone. He might have been able to hear them from the next room, or he might not. You didn't care either way. He looks the worst thing you ever said to him after all. Heart fragment. Family has- Yo, we have a nice room. We have a whole balcony. The fuck? Let's go. Family history. Link sheet of paper, where you should be writing notes, seems to be taunting you by showing off how little you truly know. So stupid. It's not like I need to do this assignment. In fact, you'd probably have just skipped it entirely if it weren't for your father's bizarre behavior. Now I wander away from the piece of paper and over to your laptop. Why does he have to be so annoying? Search.ing You pause after you make your way to the search engine. What should you search? Your last name? As a character's last name. Bam! No. Bam! Having the name Lorraine Bell. Click enter. News. Could this new miracle drug be the answer to humanity's problems? In what appears to be a discovery of a lifetime, a new miracle drug, with claims of being a cure all medicine, is currently in the testing phases. Is it worth looking forward to? It's too good to be true. Obituary and loving memory. It's with great sadness that we announced the loss of a life following a tragic car accident in. The Sandwood City Bridge, beloved mother, budding young scientist, and a kind-hearted woman. Her life will surely be grieved for years to come. So it's from This Is Real News and This Is Real Memorial? Cool, cool. Real creative, guys. Keep it up. Her obituary. You expected that, that would be there, but it still manages to make you feel sick to your stomach. Even so, more than her memorial, it's the other result that catches your eye. New miracle drug. You knew that your mother was working on something important when she was alive. That's why you were often being looked after by a babysitter, Lana. Your mother spent a lot of her day-to-day -day life at work. Oh jeez, fucking wall of text, goddamn. Well, here we go. I need to use the cursor so I can fucking read. Could this new miracle drug be the answer to humanity's problems? Published January 19th, 2043 by Mario Shaw, Sandwood City. Is the new miracle drug that's in the works actually everything it's crafted to be? Or just another dud to add to the pile? Surprisingly, it seemed that this might actually be the real deal. Although it sounds too good to be true, a laboratory in Sandwood City is currently researching a med medication that workers on the project believe has the potential to be a cure-all. What does that mean exactly? The answer is simple. It is a drug that may be able to completely eliminate the body of physical disease by gradually eating up the old internal organs and tissue and replacing them with a stronger, smarter form of tissue. Yes, you read that right. That means this panacea drug that destroys our old body as it replaces it with the new. And of course, that is where the ethical issues begin to arise. Not only is this a potentially dangerous process, human rights activists are already questioning what the smarter tissue they're referring to really is. 
and what it will change about the human race if this drug is approved. Many people with physical disabilities have to live their day-to-day -day lives facing various forms of ridicule and oppression. Is the answer to this oppression a simple, oh, to simply delete disabilities completely? Some say that instead of implying disabilities are something to rid ourselves of, we should continue to teach acceptance and kindness and spread awareness. What do you think, dear reader? Is this drug the answer to humanity's problems or recipes for disaster? Ad blocking users. <laughs> Fucking ad block. Please consider turning your ad blocking extension off. Absolutely not. I hate this. I will not do that. We know how annoying these advertisements can be. But without them, our site cannot continue to produce the highest quality content available. Thank you for your support and understanding. This is news! So this is what mom was working on. The fact that medicine that is even possible is one thing. Oh. The fact that um Super Gamer Juice, try that again, goddamn. Try again. The fact that a medicine like that is even possible is one thing, but to think your mother is one of the scientists working on it. That would have been a huge discovery. Never heard about any drugs like this. Maybe it wasn't a success. Your mother didn't talk about work very much. It would have been far too advanced for an eight-year-old to understand. The lab experiment gone wrong. We said trying to hint at something related to this, or... Glad that the data was published. It was written shortly before she died. New note to self is available. know where you can see all your stuff. Might as well navigate back to the obituary too while I'm at it. And hesitantly hover your mouse over the obituary. Why so nervous? It's been years. I... It's not the big deal anymore. Oh god! The blinding white! Jesus fuck! <laughs> Please put it on dark mode! God damn! Oh, get your shades on. Obituary, rest in peace. In loving memory, ours go out to our family and friends. We feel deep sorrow as we announce the death of a beloved mother, promising scientist, and kind-hearted woman who has passed away following an accident on the Sandwood City Bridge. This loss can only be described as a tragedy for the young woman, who was well-known and respected among her peers in the scientific community. Luann was described as someone who loved to smile and to in turn oh and to in turn loved to make others smile <clears throat> as an expression of sympathy the Breast in Peace Foundation will be making a donation to a research institute which aims to create medicine for diseases that are currently considered untreatable a lot of hope has been left behind though in the form of her 8 year old child her husband wishes to have the child's name omitted from the obituary. The unidentified truck driver who caused the crash, leading to one death and several injuries, is still at large. If you have any information on the person, please contact the Sandwood City Police. It's very standard of the obituary, aside from one detail. A lot of hope was left behind, though, in the form of her eight-year-old child. Her husband wished for the child's name to be omitted from the obituary. This entire line seems wrong. But taking away the whole light of hope thing... When... Oh. Which was probably only added to make the obituary draw out more sympathy. Why would they... Oh, why does this refer to her father as her husband? They were separated years ago. You're not sure if they ever had a finalized divorce, but he certainly wasn't present enough in their lives to refer to him in that way. 
It's for us to see an evade Mom's obituary. This should be dedicated to her and the people who matter in her life. Her deadbeat father. But why ask for my name to be omitted? Is that common? Seriously, what's going through that man's head? I'll look at my dad's name next. <clears throat> Can't even figure out my life. News, a man fired from job explains his side of the story. After being fired and accused of using his workplace's internet to access what can only be reported as restricted content, this man speaks up on the real story. Which is the truth behind it all? Obituary and loving memory. It's with great sadness that we announce the loss of a life following a tragic car accident in the Sandwood City Bridge. Beloved mother, budding young scientist, and kind-hearted woman, her loss will surely be grieved for years to come. So, the obituary pops up under his name too. As a result though, man fired from John explains his side of the story. Is it about my dad or someone else with the same name? I've never heard anything about this, about a newsworthy job termination from him. So what is this guy getting fired considered news anyway? Oh boy. Man fired from job explains his side of the story. Published March 9th, 2035 by Chloe Sully, Sandwood City. This is news! There we go. Last week we reported the job termination of a local office worker. While a man being fired is not a typical news, this particular incident was brought up, uh, has brought up some interesting questions when it was revealed that the termination was ordered from outside of the company. We spoke directly with Gray, the man involved, about the events. I am shocked at what took place. I've been fired from a position I had held for many years over false accusations. My boss didn't want to let me go, but was ordered to get rid of me. What is most confusing about the situation is that the termination order did not come from any higher up in this company either. Instead, some outside influence had a say in the matter. No one, not even the man himself, knew where the orders come from. But what was the reason for the termination in the first place? The answer is just as cryptic as anything else in the matter. Accessing restricted content through the company's internet connection. It has not been specified what exactly restricted content is in reference to. If I had to guess, I'd say someone powerful must be pulling figurative strings here, said Gray. I don't know who or why, but I'm determined to get to the bottom of it. Ad blocking users, please consider turning your ad blocking exception off. We know how annoying these advertisements can be, but without them, our site cannot continue to produce the highest quality content available. Thank you for your support and understanding. So, your father was fired from the job for accessing restricted content. But no one actually knows what this restricted content supposedly was. Sounds like he wasn't just accessing adult content or something like that. What kind of content would be restricted enough for someone outside of the company to order his job termination? Weird. It's just too weird. Mom was working on a cure-all miracle drug and my father was fired for accessing some sort of restricted files. They seem like completely unrelated events, but... I feel like there's a connection between them somehow. You might have to suck it up and ask your father for more info tomorrow. Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, there was a boy. Oh, fuck. Why? God damn. The flashbang. Can't fucking focus. This boy was given a red hood by his grandmother. He wore the hood at all times. So much that everyone started calling him Little Red Riding Hood. Hi! I will be sure to take care, said Little Red Riding Hood. Brrr. After promising not to talk to strangers or stray from the path. When you're woken, it's still dark. Words spoken are quiet, 
It's loud enough for them to wake you up from a not dream. Psst. You awake? No? What the fu- I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here. Because I have too many concerns right here, right now. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you later.